And we are back in the studio, live coming to you from the hub here on the broadcast. We have just completed our service provider innovation talk with Michael Beasley, transforming your IP infrastructure, leading market disruption. We're going to continue to talk service provider all the way up until our next innovation talk kicking off here at 2.45 Barcelona time with our very own Todd Nightingale. We're going to move things over into the Meraki realm. But before we get to that, I want to remind you, keep reaching out on social media using hashtag C-L-E-U-R. We do want to hear from you. I'm Steve Multer, and I'm joined in studio by my friend Zane Powell, Mr. Zaney. Steve, how's it going? It's going great. It's been a really fun day. I've been seeing you off in the ether somewhere. Hello, hello. I'm sorry, Steve. How happy are you on a scale of one to 10 that I'm back here with you? I'm, I'm, I'm bursting with pride, bursting with joy. Does that work? Something like that? That works. I like that. All right. Good we'll, friends again. We'll go ahead and we'll burst together <laughs> back in here. All right. So talk to me about some of the experiences that you've been having while you've been out. So either you've been here and I've been there or vice versa. What's been exciting you here today? So guess what, Steve? This morning I built a bicycle. I saw you build a bicycle, and at the end, I saw Nish was like, "Do you think? Do you think it's actually going to spin?" She spun the wheel. Yeah. Over there. So the thing is, it really upset me because no one believed that I could build the bike. But in the end, I built the bike, and the guy who was the expert, he said it was perfect. You are corporate social responsibility here at Cisco. I know it's a big passion piece for so many of us, and we talk about it frequently here in the studio. We like to get out there as much as possible and talk CSR, but the things happening in the park across the way are just fantastic. And I want to talk to you more about that, but right now it looks like our very own Nish Parker is out there somewhere on the World of Solutions show floor. How are you, Nish? Yeah, good. Just a reminder, guys, I do have an earpiece. I could hear everything you were saying. Oh, I'm so sorry. My, my apologies if we Same, said anything. no hard feelings. I was very <laughs> impressed by your bike building. <laughs> So I'm here in, I think, what is the busiest booth I've seen so far here at Cisco Live Barcelona 2020. I'm in the service provider area, and I'm joined by Ben Colling. Hey, Ben, how are you? Yes, great. Thanks, Good. Nish. Good to have you here. So you're the manager of the uh, specialists for service provider here in EMEA. That's correct. So tell us a bit about your role, what you do at Cisco, and why is this booth so busy? Well, we're all interested in how we can build an end-to-end -end infrastructure that delivers three key benefits for our service provider customers. So growing revenue, of course, top of mind. We'll be building more agile, strict SLAs from which the, our service provider customers can monetize, improve existing services, but also break into new markets, reducing costs in terms of controlling CapEx, actually aligning it to those revenues, and also really focusing on how to ultra simplify, automate operations to target that a reduction in that all important OPEX. And then we're looking at mitigating risk, providing a very secure platform from which to deliver those services. So we built out this world to try and convey all of those key factors. I'll start off with a key kind of commonality across all of them, and that is segment routing. We've now been able to deliver segment routing all the way across the portfolio, right deep into where the actual customer will connect into the network. So perhaps at a cell site, perhaps at a business access point, we're able now with, with uh, advancements in iOS XR, release seven, we've reduced the memory footprint. We're able to squeeze it into much more power effective, power efficient, cost optimized, compact systems, just like this NCS 540 here, from where we can start to deliver and deploy those strict SLAs. At the same time, and dovetailed with that, we've really streamlined our telco cloud offering so we're able to deploy it much more effectively into deeper areas of the network. For example, this new UCS platform, is, it can fit into a standard 600 millimeter rack. So we can deploy applications, for example, latency sensitive applications deep into our uh, customer networks and close to those subscribers. After all, 5.5 microseconds per kilometer adds up when you're talking about, for example, a cloud gaming application, the closer that application is to the end customer, the more reactive, the more real time that, that experience is for the end customer. So we're, we're basically showing, portraying those SLAs in these paths here. For example, if we're talking about that, um, that cloud gaming application, we'll deploy it in, a, in an edge data center probably, at which point we'll gain all of the ACI programmability benefits we've used to, used to have in the larger data centers, in a, in, a, in, a, in a core data center environment, but we bring in those benefits out in terms of edge fabrics, in terms even of remote leaves, so we can program a single switch 
um, and we can also basically gain all of those programmability benefits wherever that data center lies. Crucially, from a routing perspective, there can be a lot of paths to that particular application. We want to make sure we're always on the lowest latency path. We can monitor, monitor that latency. If there's a change in it due to a change in congestion, for example, we can make sure we reroute that traffic in an automated fashion without having uh, an operations person manually configure that change. So, we can, that goes to obviously the grow revenue capabilities. We're delivering much deeper SLAs, much more agile. And crucially, segment routing is stateless. So we can have many of these SLAs right across these networks. And that ties into saving costs because we can have all multi-access. We can have wireline, wireless. We can have business services all converged on this network with multiple SLAs with this stateless solution. The next way we can drive down cost is by simplification and automation. We can probably save 70 plus percent of the time of your operations folks in terms of deploying these networks in an automated fashion. And we're able to basically converge layers. So not just network access, but layers. We're taking basically a full line card in a transponder shelf. We're delivering it today in a pluggable this big. And then by the end of the year, we'll be delivering a full equivalent line card into a pluggable this big. And then all we do is slot it into a router and you've converged a whole transponder shelf into your routed platform and you probably save in excess of 40% in terms of CapEx. It's actually one of the reasons we've announced our intent to acquire Acacia because they're leaders in building these silicon, silicon photonics that's really be, gonna be a game changer and help that SP to reduce those costs. Thinking about cost as well, you may have seen our Cisco 8000 router. You may be looking at it thinking, wow, 36 by 400 gig line cards, that's far too big, especially when I need line card redundancy. Don't worry, we've got very flexible consumption models, so you can buy those in bite-sized chunks and only when you're actually using those ports and making money out of them will you pay for them. But you actually make sure you're investing now in cutting edge technology that's got extremely efficient um, power consumption and you're able to build for the future now but pay for what you need today. Final one, mitigating risk. All of the platforms you see here have what we call a, a trust anchor module embedded in it so we get an immutable device identity so we can check that the, the hardware is legit but also that the software has been completely untampered with and our orchestration systems can continue to monitor that to ensure you've got a secure baseline for those services. And then actually one last thing, we can monetize that security for, you, for, you, for the SP. We can build those paths, those segment routed paths, so they just, that traffic just traverses MacSec enabled links, which won't be everywhere in your network, but your bank traffic may be very sensitive to that and will want to travel over those, those MacSec links so we can push that traffic again in an automated fashion along those links and, and that can be monetized accordingly. So, Nish, I hope I've uh, given you a bit of an idea of how we can grow revenue, we can reduce costs and we can increase security. Absolutely, I love that whistle stop, uh, stop tour and that's a massive reason that people come to Cisco Live, right? Is to actually see the technology, speak to the experts and yeah, learn a little bit more about how customers are using our technology. Now you and I speak on a regular basis, so I'm really excited to see security here because obviously I work in the security business. Um, so it's interesting to see how all of this is kind of all tied together. So yeah, obviously the booth here is really busy. Um, how many Cisco Lives have you been to now, Ben? Oh, I've been to probably <laughs> 10 now. And does it get busier and busier every year? Our presence gets bigger in service provider? Every, every year it gets significantly busy. We've probably times by three our presence in the last three years here. And if you look around, it's, I think it's one of the busiest, busiest stands. <laughs> Amazing. So, pl so please, if anybody's out there who's interested in what we've gone through, come over and, and talk to us. Absolutely. And if you're not here at Cisco Live Barcelona 2020, make sure you get here next year to Cisco Live because there will be another service provider booth so people can learn more. Let's head back to the studio. All right, thank you so much, Nish, appreciate it. Thanks for the uh, great talk, and thank you, Ben, as well, for helping to walk us through all of that. You know, Zane, it's interesting. If we look at what 
pressure service providers are under these days. They are right out there on that leading edge of the internet of the future. They're the ones who are building network transformation. They're working in such a fiercely competitive uh, global market today. And when you think about that challenge, how do you get out there and meet the needs of an incredibly data hungry public? It continues to grow and grow. You can't compromise on performance. You can't compromise on service, but the pressure to deliver is unbelievable, right? Steve, I completely, completely agree. And the thing is, right, networks don't just connect, you know, networks. It doesn't just connect computers. It connects people, governments, countries. You know, it's how we go about our daily life. And I think Cisco's really taken a multi-cloud approach to really making all of this happen, creating an open and a programmable network. And this is why we're talking about delivering the network of the future, or the internet of the future. Indeed, and we've been hearing about so many new technologies that are connecting into this as well, right? As we take a look at Cisco's cloud to client approach, it does unify all of those multi-vendor solutions. We've been hearing this yesterday, starting certainly from Dave Geckler and all the way down, applications, 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 but it's not that simple. Those applications have to communicate one with one another. They have to learn from each other, support one another, and operate together. This is where the Cisco depth and breadth comes in with regards to our open network architecture. But how about the new technologies? We're hearing a lot about Silicon One. We're seeing these new investments in optic technologies as we move toward the 5G future. Uh, the release of iOS XR7, our latest network operating system. There are so many great aspects so what we're building here at Cisco, the trick now is to tell the right story to the public that demands it. 100% Steve, and you mentioned the word story. We, for, you know, sometimes we talk technology, we talk technology, we go into the bits and the bytes, but at the end of the day, as a user, as a customer, we want to hear that simple story. And I think that's what we need to do now here at Cisco. Tell that story of the future, really show our customers how we can change their business and change our world. You know, we were talking earlier today about the customer experience and how it really is a people business when you get down to it. You alluded to that a moment ago as well. It's when you get onto the show floor here at Cisco Live that you discover just how much of a people business it is, right? Yeah, 100%. I mean, if we just look around us, we can see here in the studio, everyone is talking, you know, people from different companies, small companies, large companies, people from Spain, Africa, America, it doesn't matter where you're from, but it's those conversations that they're having now that will lead to relationships and future business, maybe in two weeks, maybe in two years. It's all about the people. Sensational. Couldn't have put it better, Zane, myself. We're going to go back out to the World of Solutions show floor. Nish Parker's hanging out there. You got a new friend, don't you? I do have a new friend, Steve, thank you. So I'm here in the launch zone, and I'm joined by Greg Smith, who's our global campaign manager. Cisco, how are you, Greg? I'm fantastic, really excited to be here. We've got so much going on. We had, I think, the biggest launch in 15 years for Cisco Service Provider last month in San Francisco, and I'd love to show you what we had to, yeah, what we did back then. Yeah, I would love that. Obviously, in the keynote as well, we had so much, and I guess this area is a great place to showcase that. So what do you want to show me? Off to, over to you. Okay, so I think the first thing to understand is, why Cisco felt the need to build the internet for the future. So if you want to go back 15 years, you know, back before we had smartphones, we had apps, we, there was no Netflix, there was no YouTube, Cisco introduced the CRS-1. And the CRS was the industry's first purpose-built carrier class router for massively scalable systems, and it really set the, the, the underpinning for the internet as we know it today. But we realized that what we've got now isn't going to continue to work moving forward. We've got to continue to drive down the cost of bandwidth. We've got to continue to drive more simplified architectures. And we've really, really got to make the network more secure and easier to operate for our carrier customers and the web providers as well. So what we did for our, our big announcement, there's actually four big trends. So I want to talk about the innovations really quick. The big, big areas were around silicon, optics, software and systems. Let's take a quick look at the, at the silicon. So what I'm showing here is Silicon One. This is our new ASIC architecture. Uh, this is the highest performing routing ASIC in the industry. Twice the performance, the switching power, the efficiency of a, the power efficiency of a switching chip, absolutely unprecedented. It's now powering our new Cisco 8000 series, which I'll talk about in a moment. Um, we took on the hardest challenge first, which was the needs for the carriers and the web operators. So that's silicon. The second thing was around optics. So as the network gets faster, optics becomes a more, a greater and greater uh, cost driver for the cost of the network. 
And so what we've done here, and partially this is through some of our acquisitions in the optical space, is how do we drive down the cost of optics and how do we make them more reliable? And so what we're actually seeing here is our, uh, some of our, is a wafer from uh, our Luxterra team. Uh, we're actually showing, we've got, a, this is a 100 gigabit. Uh, there's a small, there's a large chip, which is the signal processor, a small chip, the laser, and then there's a photo detector all underneath that. They can stamp these things out like chiclets, very reliable. We make the best quality optics in the industry. And you can see these packages over here. We're showing, you can actually see some of the insides as well. 100 gig, 400 gig. This is how we're going to drive the industry to 400 gigabit and beyond. But there's more. So silicon optics software. We also introduced the iOS XR7 operating system, which is the next version of our carrier class operating system. Cloud enhanced, built for simplicity, use of modern tools, and trustworthiness. And then lastly, and the thing that is by far getting the most attention in the launch zone this week, is the new Cisco ASR, uh, AS, I'm sorry, uh, Cisco 8000 series, I misspoke, the Cisco 8000 series router, um, powered by the optics I talked about, powered by the Silicon One chip, um, and powered by our XR7 operating system. Comes in five sizes, really small, and they were showing some bigger, and, and all the way up to a, an 18 slot, Amazing. 260 <laughs> terabit per second, carrier class behemoth. Awesome, well, Greg, I'm hearing that we have to go back to the studio, but thank you so much for joining me um, and for showing us around and giving us some of the highlights of these service provider uh, launches. Back to you, Zane, in the studio. Very good, thank you, Nish. Welcome thank back. You. Thanks very much, Nash. Look, that was super interesting. It's all about Optex transceivers. It's all about Silicon One. Now, if you're excited about this and you want to know more about it, you can go to our website, cisco, www.cisco.com forward slash go forward slash sales. Absolutely, and again, as always, hashtag C-L-E-U-R. We are all watching, Zane is watching, I'm watching, our social media people are watching, so keep connecting with us as much as you possibly can. We are just about 15 seconds away right now from our next innovation talk with Todd Nightingale, our senior VP GM of Meraki. We're going to talk about simplification, a big theme throughout the entire event today, smarter solutions for the digital workplace. We're excited to hear the talk, and we'll be watching it right along with you. Enjoy.